think, I think San Francisco is basically going to be the next electric Detroit. The Google generation has access to all this knowledge. So it's incredibly easy for you know, these innovative minds to hybridize ideas. So this is our wall of iterations. This is somewhere around 400 different iterations. We took the car, we took all the benefits of a car, the safety and convenience, and we took you know, the efficiency and the romance of a motorcycle, and we just kind of put them together. So this is our prototype C1. It's just a rough sketch model. Basically, it is a self-bouncing, fully enclosed, two-wheeled vehicle that goes uh, up to 100 miles an hour, gets 220 miles per charge. It's fully electric, two-wheel drive. What we're doing is we're actually using gyroscopes and flywheels, much like how the Hubble Space Telescope works. The gyroscopes make it almost impossible to knock over. The vehicle state is dictated by how you steer. When you steer the steering wheel, the vehicle tilts to the right angle. It's basically like a little robot. This is where we first started. This is a 12 pound gyro that spins at 5,000 RPMs. Since then, we've kind of uh, grown up. And now we're looking at a 40 pound gyro that spins at 12,000 RPMs max. This puts out uh, about almost 1,000 foot-pounds of torque. So it's substantially more powerful than this. This put out maybe 20 foot-pounds. So we've grown up since. Instead of working with little prototypes and gyros like this, we now have this. So this is the C1. This is our first full-scale driving prototype. It's like an alpha prototype. So here are the gyros right here. So the counter rotate, counter process. Um, the last place you could buy gyros um, actually is the International Space Station. Uh, Honeywell makes a set of gyros that are $10 million. These cost um, significantly less than that. And uh, this is what actually creates all the stability. I roll you forward again, just take you off the stand. So what you want to do is you want to make sure that that gyro is always there. So as long as it stays there, so what's the, the next step is having a computer smart enough to be able to figure out, you know, what is the optimal position. If you take your hands off the steering wheel for a minute, whoa, whoa. Alright. I'll put it back. I'll go take my hands off. Wow. Yeah. Your balance. <laughs> What's going to happen next is smarter controller, more sensors, faster flywheels, and then a lot more stability, higher resolution. You're probably one of only ten people to set in this car. So, you know, we have one sensor right now. It's all bouncing on one sensor. And how many will you have? Uh, it's on around 32. I mean, it's really a robot. So the heart of, heart of it is just all the electronics that are arranged here. So right at the top, you've got all the computer that's doing all the work, telling the gyros what to do. They're giving instructions to the motor controllers, which are exactly moving the gyros as we need them to be. And then all this is just the, the landing gear for when it's parked. It's a pneumatic system. But the real brains of the whole thing are the gyros, and they counter-rotate, counter-precess, and generate the torque that the vehicle needs to stay upright in all situations. Every little input of the road, whether it's on a camber or on an incline, where there's a little bump in the road, anything can upset two-wheeled vehicles. It feels pretty it's good, nice right? Feeling, you know? It's like yeah. being in a boat. That's what yeah. it feels like being in a, like a kayak or something. Yeah. I mean, you're not, it's not like you're holding yourself up right, but you can feel yourself balancing. Yeah, but you're technically balancing a motorcycle right now. Right. With a lot of help. Yeah. With a lot of help. It's like a prosthetic, uh, it's like those body suits that you yeah. have things. It's like uh -huh. balancing me. And normally if you're on a motorcycle, you're constantly adjusting. We have to make sure it's the gyros that do all that rather than the person. We don't want the driver to be squirming around, making sure this is balanced. He should be as comfortable in this as in a normal car. I mean, so what will happen is the computer will be smart enough to do it all for you, so you don't have to do anything. Wow, really nice. So this Therefore, it's the gyros that got to do the work, and we've got to tell the gyros how to work. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Well, welcome to our lab. This is this is where we work. 
And we've got a range of tools, some old gyros and some old gyro parts. This was a very early version of the gyro, much lighter, even though it's quite heavy, much lighter than the current gyro and a different configuration. And I think uh, as we develop that further, we'll go to a slightly heavier one that spins even faster and gives us even more torque and therefore keeps the vehicle even more stable than that one. So prior to joining Lit Motors, I was with BMW for about 25 years. Obviously working for Lit is somewhat different to working for BMW. I mean, there's the engineering crew. I, there was about 20,000 engineers at BMW. You don't need a BMW to do this. No, you definitely don't want a big BMW to do this. You, actually, you, you want to think outside the box. This, this is a completely different product. Do you want to drive a little bit? Like you can like like forward, forward, forward. Backwards. I can forward that a little bit. All right, you want to pull that, pull the traction. So it's kind of hard to hit the, the, the pedal. Uh, you might. It's very much a robot. It's an automotive robot using ARM processors. Smart, it's basically like kind of built like a smartphone where it kind of recompiles and like, you know, you can download new firmware. It's got a totally different interior that you can, it's totally interactive. UX is an incredibly important part of the actual development of this. I mean, this is the future. Just watch the light and you're fine. And then, so reverse, uh -huh. yep. hit that switch. Yep, and now this is reverse. All I have to do is just watch the light and you're fine. Wow. Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We've got to face it. We're trying to set up another car company. Um, and that's not a small task in itself. Should I back it up and we go here? Yeah, you're fine, yeah. We're just putting you on the stand. Okay. Because we ran out of wall space, we started putting everything onto long rolls of, of paper. Uh, you know, just sketching ideas out, sketching concepts, sketching what needed to happen. From a production point of view, I'm pleased to say this is a lot less complex than a car. The, the number of parts in this is, is ridiculously small compared to a complete vehicle. We're uh, drastically uh, reducing our parts count. Basically, uh, what would take a, a traditional vehicle, like a Golf, you're probably looking around 14,000 parts, something. So it's, it's a pretty significant amount of parts. So with our vehicle, we see that we could basically reduce our parts count by a fourth of that, if not less, because it's basically a rolling iPhone. This vehicle is all electric, so there's very little like moving mechanical parts, like, except for the steering and the brakes and the controllers. All this is basically a, like your phone, so uh, that's why our parts count so low. So doing it now, doing it here in Silicon Valley in California is is really a, a key part of where we're aiming this to be. This is our first prototype. Because this is a bit smaller, it has less parts, and because it has less parts, it means less manufacturing, less engineering, easier to assemble. It's gonna be a lower price point for the consumer. Do you think driving experience is going to change? You are talking about a new product. Mm -hmm. Where are you thinking about it? Is it's going to be also a part of your augmented reality as a user, or? Um, I mean, that could be part of it. I mean, the, the interface, everything that you're going to see is going to be completely a different, like a full touchscreen display. It's going to be something that's going to meet the expectation of this new iPhone generation. Oh, so it's telling you things like feet are down. Yeah, I mean, there's landing gear, so that would take place of an automatic kickstand. Landing gear? Yes. So you actually have landing gear that deploy so you can get out. So the gyros aren't on all the time. This is the, it's kind of a little bit like an airplane. It's like driving around in a fighter jet, but on the ground. But it's very cost effective. 135 miles, so it's going to tell you range? Mm -hmm. Okay. The range is 200 miles on a single charge. This will cost you about 97 cents for one charge. So, uh, you know, if you look, compare it to a gallon of gas, um, you're going to be getting around 800 miles on one gallon of gas. I really kind of want to be more of like the Ford Model T of the 21st century. Henry Ford made cars affordable for the masses. Right now, cars, electric cars, are not affordable to the masses.
I just see this as the next logical step in the progression of transportation.